All right. Thank you all so much for coming for our November chapter meeting on user experience writing with Jessica Krieger. I'm just going to go over a few introductory slides and then I'll be introducing her as our presenter. So for our agenda, we just had our networking session from 6.30 to 7. We're going to have, as I mentioned, the welcome, some announcements and our introduction. Then we'll have the presentation followed by some Q&A. We ask that you hold all questions till the end or put them in the chat and we'll collect them for the Q&A. And then we'll have our closing at 8.30. So first, a quick welcome. My name is Bethany Aguad. I'm the president of the SCC Florida chapter. We're glad you're here for our monthly, monthly educational uh, program. We are the Florida chapter of the Society for Technical Communication that advances the theory and practice of technical communication. So we do monthly meetings, we do networking, uh, recognition, volunteering. We are a group of passionate technical communicators in Florida and beyond. We're glad that you took the time to come here with us uh, for this month's session. And we'll also have a few upcoming events that I'm gonna mention. Right. So uh, just a little bit about our chapter news. Uh, I'm going to hand it to Julia to talk a little bit about Memo to Members. Sure. Hey, everybody. I am Julia Selfick. I use she, her pronouns. I'm the chapter vice president, communications chair, and newsletter editor. Our newsletter is called Memo to Members. If you would like to write for us, please let me know. If you need ideas, see our ideas page. I'll link it for you in chat. And you can also send me your idea or article to me at the email on screen, which will also be in the message in chat for you. Thanks, Julia. Uh, just note a couple of our upcoming events. We are going to be having two socials, one online on December 5th on Zoom that everyone is welcome to join and an in-person social on December 15th in Orlando. Uh, Julia is working on a location, but we're planning to meet in a restaurant and get together and have some food, get to see each other in person for those who are in Central Florida or willing to come to Central Florida. Uh, so that'll be a great time to catch up, talk about the holiday season, how the year's gone and the year ahead. If you want to stay in touch with us between our meetings, we also have our Discord server, uh, and you're welcome to join that. We have channels there for asking questions, sharing job postings, or just uh, chatting about what's going on in TechCom or in our lives, or sharing cute pets even, uh, if you're interested in that. A reminder, the STC membership season is open for 2024, so if you are a 2023 member, uh, now is your time to renew, or if you haven't joined, it's a perfect time to join STC. I won't go over all the membership benefits, but we are sending those out by email. And also uh, just a reminder that if you are joining STC, uh, we ask that you join the STC Florida chapter. So choose us as your community. If you're going through the form and selecting, even if you've been a member before, you will have to make sure you go and scroll down and select Florida as your, your community. And uh, then you'll be a member of our chapter going forward. And just another thing I wanted to, to highlight, uh, kind of our chapter calendar ahead, something that we worked on last year. We're trying to have some ability to anticipate events. So just so you can look at what's coming in 2024. Apologies for the cough. Uh, we'll have our joint meeting with FTC coming up in January. More details on that soon. And then we're planning an Adobe InDesign tutorial in February. Uh, in March is our employment month, so we'll be doing a special themed employment networking session and also our regular employment panel where we have hiring managers and recruiters come and answer your questions about getting hired. And then we're going to have a special guest presenter in April talking about AI, chat, GPT, and large language models. May, we're planning a presentation on DITA, and then June will be our end of year social. So keep those uh, on your calendar, and we'll hope to see you in the months to come. Uh, Nicole, I kept your slide on here. Would you like me to speak to it or do you want to give a, a quick pitch? Nicole's on mute. I will present Nicole's slide. Oh. Yeah, I'm here. I'm just not particularly well, so I'll let you take it. Okay, thanks, Nicole. All right, so Nicole is our employment chair. Uh, she is posting jobs regularly on LinkedIn. If you are looking for a job or looking to fill a job, uh, we encourage you to get in touch with her and she will help you. Hopefully she'll be feeling well soon. And uh, she's a great resource and a great asset to the chapter and a wonderful person to talk to. So I encourage you to reach out to Nicole. So without further ado, I want to introduce tonight's presenter, Jessica Krieger. 
Jessica has led technical communications and marketing communications teams. She has over 20 years of experience in diverse industries. <coughs> Apologies. Uh, a master's in professional writing from Carnegie Mellon, a BA English from Penn State. She's a senior member of STC, and she's a certified professional technical communicator. So let me make sure I have everything set so that Jessica will be ready to share her screen. And Jessica, uh, everything working on your end? Oh, uh, you are muted at the moment. Okay, great. Perfect. Can you hear me now? We can. Wonderful. All right. I'm going to get ready to share my screen with you, and we will get started. Okay, can everybody see? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Okay, now let me see. Okay, I'm going to arrange my screen so that I can see too. Okay, thank you so much to the Florida SDC chapter and to Bethany for hosting this presentation. My name is Jessica Krieger, as you know, and as Bethany mentioned, I have over 20 years of experience as a hands-on technical communications and marketing communications leader, mentor, and content strategist. I've led diverse teams across competitive and fast-paced technology industries, and I've spoken at the SDC Summit and Mad World. I'm an expert at driving innovative messaging strategy in complex, fast-paced, and highly regulated financial, technical, and medical sectors and I'm passionate about promoting products and services that improve people's lives. I'm thrilled to speak with you this evening about user experience, abbreviated as UX, writing, a discipline of design that writers and editors can use to create optimal user experiences. The discipline of UX writing has gained popularity in recent years and major firms now distinguish this unique branch of technical communications as related, yet distinct, from the fields of copywriting and UX design. Because you are in this talk today, chances are you're already a great writer. But do you know the basics of design and how to talk to designers so that you can better contribute to your organization and to the user experience? At my graduate program in professional writing at Carnegie Mellon University, we learned about the visual verbal connection. Since my school days, I've worked on UX writing as well as managed UX designers and UX writers. Tonight, I'll discuss the skills used in this burgeoning field. You'll leave the webinar knowing the basics of UX writing, including incorporating elements of user interface, UI, design, to improve the user experience. So I'm going to move to the next slide and let's just see if that moves you to the next slide. Do you see the next slide? We're still on the first nope. slide. Still on the first slide. Okay, hold on just a sec.
But did you move now? Yes. Okay, now what do you see? UX writing definition from Coursera. Okay. It just went away. Okay, I'm going to share my screen again. Hold on just a second. Now I'm going to share. Hold on just a second. Sorry for the technical difficulty. It's okay. Okay, now can you see the, the current slide? I see uh, getting to know you. Getting to know you. Yes. Okay, perfect. It's great. Now, first, let's find out who's in the audience. Please use the chat box to indicate which applies to you. Does your job or coursework include UX writing? You can put your answers in the chat if your job or coursework includes UX writing. Okay, so some of them have it, but it's not in some of your titles. Okay, now can you see, um, does, your job, does your job title include UX writing? Not currently. Okay, so there's a mix. So note that UX writing is more likely to appear on your resume than in your formal job title. Tonight, you'll see that you may be working on UX writing more than you thought or find out that you're interested in moving in that direction. Okay. Now, tonight, we'll be exploring these topics. UX writing terms, creating the user experience, UX writing guidelines, working with product teams, and UX writing careers. First, let's define the main terms used in UX writing. Now, I just wanna check, Do you, does everyone see a slide that says UX writing? Definition from Coursera. Okay, so we're not advancing now. Hold on. You suddenly went back to the first slide and then you advanced one slide from that. I don't know how that happened, but you were in the next slide after this and then you went back. Okay, now what do you see? This is the agenda. And now you see the agenda. Now, what do you see? UX writing terms, one. Perfect. Okay. And it changed now to UX writing, right? Yes. Okay, good. So what exactly is UX writing? Coursera has an expansive definition. We'll dive more into each of these elements this evening. Note that Coursera, Coursera also explains how UX writers are different than similar professions. While UX writers need to keep the brand in mind, copywriters focus more on customer marketing. Technical writers typically work on longer form content than UX writers, such as manuals. UX writers might use a content strategist guideline, but they usually don't develop the company's content strategy. UX writers primarily deal with the written aspects of the website or apps that users directly interact with. So UX writers plan and write microcopy in apps and websites and other digital products that users need to navigate a product. Microcopy are small pieces of writing used in instructions, chat box, and more. 
Like UX designers, UX writers conduct user testing and user research and interact with product teams. Design tools like Figma and Sketch are used to plan and design copy. Do you see a slide now that says design terms from usability.gov? Yes. yes. Great. Usability.gov is an archived government site that is a helpful resource for UX best practices. Government UX content is now also being developed and posted on digital.gov. Here are the design terms that you should know. Graphical user interfaces focus on what the user sees as opposed to a voice interface that they hear. User design interface, user interface design anticipates what users need to do and ensures that the interface has elements that are to access to facilitate those actions. Interaction design, or IXD, studies how a user interacts with a page, application, or product. Information architecture focuses on how information is organized, structured, and presented. But what exactly is the user experience that we keep talking about? Let's find out. According to usability.gov, their multifaceted definition, user experience involves studying the effect of design on the ease of use and level of satisfaction with a product, site, or system. Understanding users, what they need, what they value, their abilities, and their limitations. Accounting for the business goals and objectives of the group managing the project and providing value through information that is useful, usable, desirable, findable, accessible, and credible. UX writers empower users by guiding them through the journeys that they need to take to succeed. Well, we must create content that supports our goals and the goals of our business, we ideally should act as user advocates as well, and even user evangelists dampening the needs of our customers to use our products most efficiently. The sweet spot where user needs, business goals, and information intersects creates the optimal user experience. Designing an optimal user experience can lessen onboarding time, enhance client satisfaction for retention, create loyal customers, and much more. We create user experience through research, user testing, writing, design, and evaluation. Importantly, while UX writers can be siloed in an organization, the most effective user design can't be created in a vacuum. For instance, we work with designers on mock-ups. Mock-ups are not all created equal. Here are the types you will see from low to high fidelity. A wireframe is a sketch to roughly show what a product will look like. A mock-up is a model that fleshes out more designs, more details in the design. Prototype is a working model of the product. When UX writers work on products, they keep the main design principles in mind. These are the main principles of design, balance, alignment, grouping, consistency, and contrast. And that brings us to the heart of the matter, the user experience. Let's look at some inspiring examples of quality UX writing in action. Here is an example of microcopy from the Headspace app. Take a minute to read it. What do you notice? You can put in the chat some things that you notice. They're slightly different. Parallel structure, yeah. 
Anybody else notice anything from the microcopy? And they're slightly different, yeah? Okay. So Headspace is a meditation and sleep app. They use a friendly and conversational tone and calming colors. All microcopy is brief, but it's not all the same. Along with the product and team and user considerations, your company's tone and style will govern what and how you write. Writing error messages is also part of UX writing. This is an example of an error message that is not only informative and entertaining, but also nostalgic for many. For many. Atlassian has a great blog full of UX writing ideas. Here, they show IGN, a video game and entertainment media website, giving a playful spin to the traditional 404 error page. Take a look. If you know what game is represented, type it in the chat. Yes, very good. It's Super Mario Brothers, you win. Calls to action are another critical element of UX writing. Gone are the days when monosyllabic call to action buttons are the only option. Now you can replace yes or no with more precise instruction. Take a moment to read through this call to action. See how Slack, a communications platform, gives the user more information directly inside the button. Let's look at the main elements of the user interface that UX writers need to document. Input controls include checkboxes and buttons, such as radio buttons, switches, and toggles. They can also be drop-down lists, text fields, date or color pickers, and sliders. Navigational components include navigation bars and panels, headings, menus, hamburger buttons, icons, image carousels, and sliders. Informational components include modal windows, progress bars, tool tips, definitions, message boxes, and error messages. Containers are accordion lists that expand when you click them. The UX writer needs to walk in the user's shoes. And think about what they need to best complete their task. Mapping the user experience allows us to learn about our audience. To help us understand our audience across cultures, we develop personas. For example, you may have one persona who is a Gen X mom from Pittsburgh and another who is a retired veteran who's moved to Arizona. They may both be in college. I mean, they both may both be college educated women with degrees in engineering but they have very different experiences and needs for the same services. We start with personas and then take the personas through specific scenarios and then complete customer journey maps. Let's talk about each. Personas group users into categories to drive design decisions. They use demographics to define characteristics such as age, interests, values, and education. Scenarios show the steps your user takes to use your product. They focus on completing specific tasks. Customer journey maps outline the user's total experience with the product. And they also map a design flow for each persona.
Next, we'll cover helpful guidelines for UX writing. UX writers are guided by key processes whereby they conduct user research. This includes user testing and A-B testing. They benchmark best practices, which include looking at people who, and companies who won industry awards and seeing the great things that they've done, using their company's style and tone, practicing minimalism, which involves saying the least that you can to get your point across, and using progressive disclosure, disclosing only the information that you need to, when you need it, and then giving links for more info when necessary. They also collaborate on design. This gains stakeholder buy-in and is a process to allow for internal reviews. UX writing for mobile devices has special guidelines. For the UX in your hands, you want to be consistent and design for your thumb. Keep copies short and sweet and integrate with personal assistance and chatbots. You want to keep in mind that people may be moving when they're on the go and that they may be talking into the phone and they may be muting. You need to, to account for push notifications as well and take all of that in mind. Think about your own behavior when you're on the phone. U.S. writing for wearable devices also accounts for movement, but you have to really simplify here for the tiny screens, prioritize readability for your smartwatch and other devices, such as Fitbit and, and things that you wear. You want to stick really to basic features for the very small screens. So, Sometimes we emphasize digital interfaces when we talk about UX writing, but many readers still interact with print documents every day. For print, we focus on creating skimmable content because it might be longer content that users will want to search for and find what they need quickly. We follow the brand standards and we add navigational guides. Navigational guides for print include tables of contents, page numbers, and headings. We also want to apply our design principles. Keep in mind, while you write for the user experience, your product may be used across cultures, and you may need to translate your text and graphics. Make sure there's enough space to translate text and graphic elements into another language with different characters. UX translation goes beyond transcribing the words from one language to another. It also includes accounting for cultural differences in colors, symbols, and more. We may work with translation companies and internal company translators to localize our interfaces. And throughout our UX writing careers, we'll work with product teams. Popular software programs for UX writing and product teams include software for design and collaboration, such as Adobe XD, which is being discontinued. And Adobe, I believe, just bought, bought Figma. So that will be probably incorporated together. Sketch, Canva, which is a simpler kind of tool that is e a little easier to use. Envision and Miro boards and Visio for collaboration. There's also been a wide rise of artificial intelligence tools that are now used for UX writing. We have the Adobe User Experience, which has Adobe Sensei. We have Midjourney, which you can create images with text prompts. We have Big Jam, which is 
AI used in Figma, and we have Magic Write, which is used with Canva. These AI tools for UX writing and design are growing and popping up every day as the artificial intelligence world is rapidly growing and expanding. So this is something that we'll definitely want to watch for. And I know we have an AI talk coming up later this year, so it'll be exciting to learn more. So building cross-departmental relationships is really important when we create a smooth user experience and we want to get our team buy-in. Departments can pool and share resources to collaborate on product interface design. We want to build consensus. This helps when we test the product. We'll test it together. We can share our resources and Especially if it's hard for you to access your users, sharing resources and pulling people internally for testing can be really important and a big win. You'll want to build relationships with people at many departments throughout your company. You'll look to people in departments like client training and education, user interface, user experience product management, engineering, sales, technical support, IT, research, marketing, quality assurance, HR, accounting, finance, design, purchasing, legal, and of course, the leadership team. You, as a UX writer, or technical communicator may sit on one of these teams, but just because you sit in one team doesn't mean that you won't be reaching out to members of many other teams. In this collaboration, cross, cross teams and cross departments, feedback is really important, not just with departments, but with your users. We can improve our UX writing by incorporating feedback that we gather through research and through our testing. This feedback includes feature requests that come in, feedback forms that can be internal or external, bug reports from our clients that may come in through, through QA, and our developers, surveys, user testing, A-B testing, which compares two items and lets the user choose which they like better, or even multivariate testing, which compares multiple items, hard sorting. This is where the users or customers use cards to organize information the way they think it should flow. Focus groups and metrics which we'll also discuss in more detail. Let's turn now to user testing. User testing is not just for designers. When possible, you can user test your writing with customers or your teammates to improve your content's quality using these text tests described in technical communications today. And that's the textbook that's used for the Certified Professional Technical Communicator coursework. So these tests improve the content quality and they set quantifiable objectives to measure both normal and minimal user performance. You may have heard of the minimum viable product, the minimal viable product has a minimal user performance. And this performance can be measured by these types of tests. Read and locate tests. This looks at can the user find the information? Understandability tests, can they understand it? Performance tests, can they do it? And perhaps the most important one of all is safety tests, 
Is it safe? In addition to user testing, we can use metrics to prove our user cases. Knowing your audience is the key to UX writing. Here are some key data points you'll want to track. User demographics, user count, user activity, and user feedback. There are also metrics targeted directly to user engagement. You can prove the value of your work by delivering analytics that demonstrate that your documentation has saved your company money. There are several cost-cutting metrics and key performance indicators that may be central to your case and to communicating with your leadership. So when you're communicating the value of your work to leadership, think about these metrics in your UI UX writing. Onboarding time, is it lessened because of your UX writing? You wanna take a base and then measure when you roll out UX writing updates. Live training costs, has a training time lessened? Call center costs. You will never be able to eliminate all calls to a call center, but you can lessen the time of the calls if people refer to your UX writing interfaces and training that saves them time. Email support costs. Can people put in a link to your interfaces for email support that helps? Sales and conversion rates. Are sales going up or are more people starting to add to the user base? User performance and productivity. Are users performing better with the app and has their productivity increased? Development time. Is the time for development less? And translation costs. Have you, by cutting some of the content, improved the time to translation? These are all factors that you can look at. And there are also metrics that are specific to UI and UX. You can measure engagement through interaction, such as looking at heat maps, page depth, mouse movements, and eye tracking. You can also measure sentiment. So this includes how many people follow you? Are they liking, sharing, and tagging your content? What are some of the reviews for your site? Are they four star? Are they five star? Can you share them on Shopper Approved? Can you share them on Google if they're great? And looking at the rankings and ratings. You can gather these metrics using several tools. Analytics software packages. They include Adobe Analytics Cloud, which is often used with marketing, but can be used with design as well. Google Analytics, which can be free and also can be enterprise or cost. Microsoft Power BI which is a business intelligence software that we can use to measure which features are used most and least. So we can see what we need to maybe focus on more or, or beef up. Flurry Analytics and Mixpanel, which can be used for mobile analytics. Full Story, which can be used to look at user interaction with a project, with a product. So for example, when someone's completing an application, you can look and see exactly where they are with the application and where they're maybe having trouble. And so you can try to address that when you go to the next round of UX design and UX writing. Now let's talk more about improving our UX writing careers. You can continuously improve yourself through these channels. 
You can learn more about UX writing through professional societies, such as our own Society for Technical Communication. And you can go for certifications and take courses and take webinars to learn more about UX writing. There's also within the Society for Technical Communication, a Usability and User Experience Special Interest Group, or SIG. We have the IE, Professional Communication Society. And these are some options within the SDC. Can you put in the chat if anyone here is a member of the SIG or if anyone has taken any certifications or courses or webinars that you recommend? No, I don't see any in the chat. Okay. UX Writers Conference. Great. Perfect. So we also have the Nielsen Norman Group, which puts out great design content. Oh, led by Joe Linsky, SDC member, and someone will be taking, Kay will be taking UX Theory at UF next semester. Very good. Wonderful. UX Theory. Great, perfect. So you also can check out the Interaction Design Foundation and the User Experience Professionals Association. These are all places that you can find more great content. So UX writers can be individual contributors or on a management track. Here's a sample per progression of job titles. Junior UX writer, when you're just starting out. UX writing specialist. These are positions where you might have a few years of experience. A UX writer, which will have even more experience. Often this is parallel to a UX research writer, but the research writer will have an emphasis more on research for their role. We next have the senior UX writer who has even more experience. This can also be a lead UX writer or a team lead position. The next title has manager in the title, which is a UX writing manager. There's often an overlap between the senior UX writer or the lead UX writer and the UX writing manager. And finally, we have the UX writing director, which is one of the more senior level positions that we, have, that we see posted these days in UX writing. Now, you could also move to a chief of design or chief design officer, these are, or chief experience officer. That's another possible path. But note that a career path isn't always linear. Sometimes you may move from a manager to an individual contributor because you prefer to be an individual contributor or you want less responsibility or you like focusing on your contributions and not managing a team. It's a different, management is a different skill set and it's not for everyone and that's okay. So you don't have to aim to be a UX writing manager or director. If you enjoy the work, it's perfectly fine to, to stay in a UX writing position or UX research writer and better your skills on that IC track. If you looked at job postings in technical communications today, you've probably seen positions posted for roles like these. Many UX writing positions are in larger companies that can budget to have a full-time employee focused mainly on UX writing or in tech companies that value design. These companies may include Amazon, PayPal, Dropbox, and many more. If you wanna type in the chat box, if anyone is looking for a job and there are any companies that they recommend other people look for that have UX writing, feel free to drop them in the Dropbox for anyone who might be interested. You can even check out 
career advice from senior UX writers at Google, Airbnb, and Spotify in the blog and the reference link. If you'll notice, there are reference links on the bottom of many of the slides, and you can check out this, these materials if you want to dive deeper. So in this, in this reference blog, they, the senior writers give the skinny on working at these companies and what it takes to be a UX writer. So you can learn from the insiders there, which is really cool. So it, oh, Rick, Bethany says she's seen Nicole share some UX writing jobs on LinkedIn recently. That's great. These jobs are popping up more and more. So you will see them more and more, and it's something definitely to watch for. Notice what they put on the job descriptions too, because those, if you're interested in it, but don't have the skills, you can look at the job description and see what kind of skills they have on the requirements and then beef up those skills. A little trick, if you're interested in that, but don't quite have the skills, you can put on your resume that you're interested in developing the skills or on your LinkedIn profile that you're passionate about these areas so that you have these keywords in your resume. Of course, be transparent when you interview that you're not an expert at these th things yet, but you're very interested in them. And this will make you more searchable. So at this point, you may be wondering something that we don't often talk about as a group, but that is very relevant when people are finding a job. And that is salary. You may be thinking, well, what does a UX writer typically make? Well, one way of looking at that is looking at sites like Glassdoor or salary.com. The SDC also puts out a salary database. Can, can you, I see someone say, did I miss the slides being shared already? Can, can everyone see the slide that says UX writing career path? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, great. Um, so according to Glassdoor, the estimated total pay for a UX writer is $91,276 per year in the United States area, with an average salary of $75,920 per year. So that's a, a great salary and something that if you're interested, you can aspire to. Now, keep in mind, this is one estimate and it's an average. The larger companies will probably pay more Smaller companies also that value UX writing and design may also pay more. And it's really also based on your experience and your education as well. So it's something to look, look for. Um, so if this has piqued your interest, you may want to know more about the UX writing career. And that's it in a nutshell. But I wanna talk about what we talked about today and what we've learned about what UX writing is and isn't by looking at some of the statements that we have here. So I want this to be an interactive segment. So the first statement is, UX writers only need to work on copywriting. So use the chat box to indicate whether the answer for this is true or false. False, I see a lot of falses. Correct, this is false. And this is a common misconception. People see UX writing and they think, oh, you know, that's just copywriting. And part of our job as UX writers and as technical communicators 
is to educate people, sometimes in our firm, sometimes our colleagues in other firms, about what the pro profession really is and isn't. Because the standard Joe may not know what a UX writer is. And for our understanding, we want to know that copywriting is an essential element of the job. But UX writers, as we saw today, actually do a lot more than copywriting, including planning, research, editing, testing, and more. So there's a lot of cross collaboration that goes on, a lot of design work, and a lot of work on interaction design, the user interface, and the different disciplines that we talked about today. You may also hear people in the human, human interaction design world talking about user interface design and related disciplines. It's a very interesting field that is constantly changing and growing, and it involves a lot more than just copywriting. So the second statement is, UX writers own, oh, the second statement is, you don't need to be a designer or a programmer, or even have UX in your title to contribute to the user experience. Use the chat box to indicate whether the answer to that is true or false. True. I see a lot of trues. I think you guys have the picture by now. And I remember we talked about this earlier in the chat, earlier in the talk as well. Some people mentioned that they do this a little bit in their work, but it's not actually in their title. And it's going to be much more common to have UX writing in your job than in your title, because often technical communicators wear many hats. And because often there's just not the budget in a company to hire someone specifically for UX writing. So this is absolutely true. And another thing to keep in mind is even if we aren't able to create the user interfaces ourselves, technical communicators can have valuable input into creating a, a, an engaging user experience for our users through user testing and putting ourselves in the user's shoes and collaborating across the product line, working with people in all the departments we just mentioned, design, marketing, user education, user experience, and of course, leadership to prove some of the metrics that we mentioned before. So the third statement is UX writers begin their work after the product is designed, making the label snappier. Is this true or false? Put in the chat box. I see a lot of falses. Now this is a really common misconception that I think people may have in their minds that technical writers and UX writers, they take copy that other people might have written and make it prettier. And that's pretty much it. And well, technical writers and UX writers do take other people's copy and improve upon it. That is a small part, as we can see, of what technical communicators do. In fact, technical communicators and UX writers shouldn't have to wait until the product is designed to describe the user interface element. Often, if you wait until the end, it's too late to make a measurable, uh, a measurable and big difference. And you have to wait until the next iteration or sprint to be able to really improve the product. So UX writers should be instrumental in helping to design the user experience right from the start 
right from those mock-ups, those wireframes, and those prototypes that we discussed. UX writers should be working hand in hand with the designers to really address the user's needs with user research, with user testing, and with user the optimal user experience in mind. And that's right. Charlie has mentioned that rework costs nine times as much once it's in production. And that's really true. People think that it's much quicker if technical writers and UX writers come in at the end. And that might be so, but it's much less efficient. So it's as I mentioned, it's, it's our job as, as, te as technical communicators to try to educate our companies on all of these things that we can do. So I think that we've learned today more about what UX writing is and that UX writers can do so much more than just creating and editing labels. So finally, let's put it all together. Let's look at your own projects and let's kind of talk a little bit about what you do and how you can use the processes and guidelines and tools that we learned about today to improve the UX writing in your own work project. So if you can use the chat box now, to talk about how you can use some of these processes to improve the UX writing in your own work. Does anyone have any ideas about how they can use some of these ideas and what you're doing today? Of course, without revealing anything proprietary about your company. Yeah, for sure. I think these principles yeah. can be applied both um, in, you know, in my personal and professional um, careers. So I think knowing, you know, what a user experience is and the lingo that they assign to that experience is highly critical for, for technical writers. And I think they might not always talk the same lingo or jargon, um, you know, a UX designer and a technical writer. And, and so I think there's some barriers to break down there just through, through education. Um, I think this is a great presentation. Thank you so much, Charlie. And I, I see that that's great. We really can break down barriers. And I really, I really agree. And I think that collaboration is vital to improving our work and the product and reaching the user as well. So um, Alex says that he, it, well, when I'm looking at some of the other answers, Lori says that she can get involved with a product design team from the get-go, perfect. Alex says that he reviews user training, IMI, so he can give, give some of these tips, wonderful. Yeah, this is really important that we, when we're reviewing other people's, we can take an eye with these tips in mind and look at the best practices. So Lori says she's been involved during the design phase using Figma, wonderful. And Bethany says, it's great to remind the developers throughout the process how we can contribute. Yes, it, the developers, often can be siloed and we need to tell them what we can do because they may not know or they may forget. So Kate says, remind the project teams the cost of maintaining various changes in the long run. That's true. And, and we also want to tell our project teams and our leadership how we are saving the money um, if we can 
using the data points that we talked about today. So Honda says, Miranda says that we all serve as user advocates to some degree, excellent. And Charlie says Figma can provide a great design experience. And Joy really resonated with using key data to keep track of how the user interacts with your content. Yes. And that is so important because sometimes when we create things, we don't know how it's going to land. People think that because they design something and they get it, and maybe they show a couple people in the company and they get it, that the users are going to get it. But that's not always true. The users that you have may not be the same or of the same mindset as the people in your company. And so that's why it's really important to try to get your users or a subset of your users to test your product if you can, because to get inside their head, you really have to see what they're doing. And Charlie says adoption is critical. Yes. So one more discussion point that I want to bring up. I want to talk a little more about metrics. So what metrics have you seen today can you use to prove return on investment for your improved UX writing or your technical writing? Let me know in the chat box if any of the metrics that we talked about you're either using or you think you may want to use in the future. This way you'll be able to get to hear from your colleagues too about what metrics are popular. Kate says screen view time or page abandonment rates. Yes. That's a big one, looking at how, how much time people are spending on the screen and page abandonment rates when they're leaving the page, bounce rate. Also, I've seen for e-commerce, um, when they cart abandonment, when they abandon the cart, that's really good information that you need to know. Charlie says defects. Yes, finding defects, finding errors finding things that are wrong. People want to know that because that saves time and money and user frustration. So one thing that we didn't talk about as much today, but should be in the back of your mind is that when you have a good user interface, when you have the optimal user experience, your users are happy and they will be loyal. And creating customer loyalty as we did mention briefly, user evangelist is, is a great part of, can be a great part of UX writing. So customer support call reductions, yes, definitely. Ticket deflection, uh-huh, that's really true. Being able to reduce the time of tickets and solve them quicker. Average handling time, yes and time between failure and time since last accident. Yes, those are really important metrics because if we can lessen that and if we can make our products safer and more efficient, then our UX writing is hitting the target. So that's all folks. I wanted to thank you for listening. I've really enjoyed our talk and our discussion. And I would like to continue the conversation with you. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. If you're, we're not already connected, that would be wonderful. And I want to thank, again, the STC for hosting. It's really been a pleasure to speak with you today about UX writing, which is a really cool and burgeoning field. And now, let's open it up for questions. All right, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording here.